Hey, this is Max. I am back with another CSR2 video. I am here with the 2014 LBRA V10 Plus Coupe. Woo, that's a mouthful. Anyway, this particular car is the upcoming PC Cup car for this season. It will be available to us in about two days on Thursday, and the PC Cup will then uh, be available to run until almost the end of the season on uh, next Wednesday. So let's take a look at the stage six effects of this car, as well as discuss a little bit about this tier four car's potential both for speed traps and for sprints, because that's always part of the events nowadays. And also, I'm sure some of us are curious about its viability as a Tempest three tier four car. So let's take a look at the car now with stage five only. This is stage five full fusion. So with just all the stage fives and the fusions, you are now looking at about 639 PP and 1038 EVO. Now that's not the optimal. I'm sure I could tweak it for a point or two more, but it'll give you a good idea where the car's at. And that puts us right around 12.784, 8.114, Quarter mile speed 176 and half mile speed around 203. So the half mile speed on this car when it's tuned to optimal uh, is not very high because it tends to have a high final drive. So that means that this car is not likely to easily hit 260 miles per hour. That also means if there are tough challenges in the speed traps within the PC Cup, that may also prove to be dis uh, difficult for some people. So let's take a look at the stage sixes and we're gonna go from some of the worst to the best in this case. And I'm gonna start off with our almost always the worst, which is the intake. As you can see, the intake does add a little bit of EVO and one point of PP, but that's not very promising when you're talking about a car that has potential to hit much higher EVO points, that little 6, 60 point change, not even, it's a 54 point change, will barely make a two, two three hundredths difference, not even a full tenth. So let's see if I can squeeze it for a point or two more. It sure doesn't look like it. Dino tells the tail 12.64 from a 12.78. So it dropped a little bit, right? So that's a 1.4 drop. Not too bad. That is something, but is that gonna be much as compared to the other stuff? Well, I can tell you this, full stage six, this car is much, much faster. So that's a big gap between what it can do maxed versus what it can do Currently, max this car runs about a 10.7 something. Right now it's a 12.6. So that's a big gap to fill with the other stage sixes. So intake is a 1.4, which isn't terrible. Um, we need to keep an eye on the others and see if they always surpass intake. Well, turbo should because it had two points of PP increase, but the EVO is not as good. Notice that it's about 20 EVO short. That may end up being a wash. So this could be very close or may even be slightly worse than intake. I hope not. Turbo usually beats intake, but in this case, we'll find out. And it does. So it is still about two, three hundred better than intake without fine tuning. And that is not too bad. So there you have between the two, about a three tenths drop so if you had these two stage sixes installed, you should be able to get down to about a 12.4 uh, from a 12.7. That's not a whole lot of a drop though. And that's with full fusions. So without full fusions, it could be a lot worse. Okay, three PP. That's definitely gonna be better than both intake and turbo. Is that gonna be more than two tenths better than stock? Stage five, I'm not so sure, but let's tweak this and see if 
anything moves when we touch the final drive. Sure doesn't look like much there. So that went from a 12.78 to a 12.48. So that's a full three tenths drop, which is good. Not great, but good. But basically one engine is equivalent of both intake and turbo. So with the three, you can actually basically go from two stage six to one stage six and run the same time. That's not so good for people who pull intake and turbo, right? If you had engine instead, there's right there, um, both your other stage six combined. All right, so we're starting to get towards what is traditionally some of the better stage sixes. Let's take a look at transmission. Big jump there and big jump here. That's definitely going to bode well for having a decent amount of effect. But the question is, is it going to beat the three tenths that the engine did, or is it going to just come in kind of close? That's not bad at all. 12.379 is definitely better than engine. In fact, it is about a tenth better. So that is good. It is better than engine by quite a bit. But it is both better than the combination of turbo and intake combined and engine by itself. So this is almost another tenth better than where engine comes in at. That makes trans a pretty strong stage six. Engine was about three tenths, and this is about four tenths. So it definitely beats it. And that brings us to tire. Decent jump. Oh, but that is miserable right there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, tire. Maybe as bad as intake and turbo, if not worse. I mean, that yes, that jump, but that is really, really little. Let me see if uh, we can get it up a few more points. No. Wow. No. And what it does, 12.630, about a 1.5 drop, very similar to uh, the uh, intake and turbo. So this is on par with them. So this is turning out to be a bit of a dud. So we have three bad ones, two decent ones right now. That leaves us only two stage six left, which will make up all the difference for the rest of the times. That tells me body and nitrous should both be decent because you really don't have that much of a margin left to move and you only have two stage sixes to cover it, right? And we're talking about jumping from 12.8 to 10.7. So these two has to give a decent amount. So that's a lot. That is also decent. That right there tells me it's very close to engine and trans as well. So let's see what it does. Again, so far I haven't really tweaked it too much because it seems as long as you leave it there, it's pretty decent. I'm sure there's a way to maybe do a different combination that'll be better. Uh, but as of right now, I'm going to leave it here. Let's take a look at the time. Yep, right on par with the other guys, right? 12.37, 12.38, 12.36. It's right around there. So this is basically on par with trans and engine. And that means this is also about a 410 drop. So it went from 12.78 to a 12.3. So that's a decent amount of drop. That leaves us with only one stage six left. Ah, by process elimination, if everything else is mediocre or bad or decent and not super good, and this is the one left, the only thing that can tell me is this must end up being the best stage six because it has to carry the day for the remaining amounts that we're talking about. So we had basically a four tenths drop, four tenths drop, four tenths drop, right? And then these combined, maybe these two combined is a four, four tenths drop. And that one is about a 1.5 drop. So you're talking about a total of two second drops. So there's almost 1.6, 1.7 seconds there. Um, 
this should also be a decent amount that makes up all the rest of the difference. And it sure looks like it's going to do it because right now it's already well over the uh, both the PP and EVO for body, which is a very decent amount of drop. And we haven't tuned this because this allows us to tweak it some more. So here, what do we have? 12.2. So this one does the most. I mean, it went from a 12.78 to a 12.2. So almost a 0 0.5. Uh, it is a 0 0.5 drop in time. So this is definitely the biggest one out of all of them. So nitrous is definitely the big boy here. However, that being said, nitrous, body, trans, and engine, each comes down individually by between 0.5 to 0.4 in time. That's a that's a big chunk. So basically, two or three of these will drop you 1.2 seconds from a 12.8 to possibly a 11.5 or 11.6 or 11.5. So that's a very decent amount. Let's take a look at that combination that um, and see where it puts us when we have three or four of these big boys put in. So let's say we have all the good ones. No, let's do three of the good ones, right? Let's not do all four. Let's just use trans. All right, we're going to ignore engine, which is also good, but tire, turbo, and intake are bad. So you have three good ones, and let's see where it ends up. But then we're going to put the four other ones in and see where they end up. And this is one of those things that people forget is sometimes getting the right stage six can make a huge difference. You may think, oh, but I have four stage six and the other guy only has three. How is he beating me? Well, this is why. Because in combination, some of the bigger stage sixes can have a huge effect on the time. You went from a 12.78 to a 11.4. So that's a good drop. Now, what about the other four? Let's take a look at the other four. I'm going to tell you right now, my estimate is the other four won't match those three. They'll still be a bit slower, probably around 11.7 um, in uh, final time, or possibly even slightly higher. But engine will do, do a bit of work there, put it right to 12.3. And the rest of them, well, I don't know. That That's going to be kind of a let's take a look and see situation. So my money is on these four not being able to come equivalent to the other three. Despite having engine here, which is going to pull its weight, but the question is going to be here and here, whether that combination and knowing that the tune isn't likely to change a huge amount, um, whether that combination will be enough to get us there. Um, obviously, I'm going to have to tweak nitrous again. Hmm. Not the most tuning effect out of this. Right, 12.05, 651, and the tail is not good. All right, so we're talking 11.4 for three stage six and 12.0 with four stage six. Now you understand why some people, despite having five stage sixes, cannot beat the PC cup time and others with two or three seemingly are pulling out magical ability to beat these cups. That's why, because there's so much of a gap between the effects of these that sometimes having three or four of the bad ones with one decent one, right? Three bad, one decent can't even come close to three good ones. 11.4 to a 12, that's a 0.6 second difference. That's huge huge difference that means these three here okay these guys barely made a difference in the overall scheme of things no they did drop time you went from 12.8 almost to a 12.0 okay so that's 0.8 you drop 0.8 in time that's great but that's not perfect either uh, what if you had these four big ones let's take a look at that that's going to put you probably right dead on at 11 flat uh, maybe even a little 
a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Let's see where it gets us. That means four of the big stage sixes can put you in the gap between that and the four not so good stage sixes, almost a full second. That's a big gap to have to deal with. And I can tell you right now, this is looking like it's going to be pretty decent. Now, this car like seems to like high grip. It doesn't seem to want to go much over this top speed to get the best time. That's an issue. That means this car tops out around here, and it's not going to want to go any further. 11146, okay, with the four good ones versus 12 -0. So we're talking about a 0.85 difference between the four, four good stage sixes and the three of the worst plus one decent stage six. So there's a big gap in time between the two. So where, where would I put this, the um, PC Cup final time? Based on what I'm seeing here, um, three of the top stage sixes can put you at an 11.4. I would think natural motion would not make it much, much slower than 11.5 to 11.6 for this PC Cup. Maybe 11.7. Uh, if they're being rather generous, maybe 11.8 to 11.9. That's really nice of them. My feeling is 11.5, 11.4 to 11.6 will be the likely range where this PC Cup is going to fall. Here's why. Because it was a Prestige Cup, uh, not a PC Cup, but a, a Milestone car. And those who went through the Milestone got a Stage 6 back then. You're going to get two from, one from the Cup, one from a Crew Cup on Friday. So there's three. Most of us pulled at least one of these stage sixes somewhere along the line in the past few months, and that's four. So why would they make it much easier than 11.5? I don't know. I wouldn't. I, th I would think they would make it relatively tough. Now, fusions. Somebody's going to complain about fusions. I'm going to give you a tip. Go buy the tier two Audi TTRS and strip them. They deliver fast, they're cheap. And they give you four op four possible fusions each time you strip one, including a possible uh, fusion for uh, Epic. And the main advantage of using this car over the Tier 3 car is for the price of one of these, or I should say one of the Tier 3 car um, Audis, you can get almost three of the TTRS because it is a relatively cheap car at 80000 and the car in tier three is about 200. So, you know, you do the math. Also, the tier three car does not give you eight fusion slots when you strip them. They give you five, I think, or maybe six. So it's not worth it to buy those and strip them. Yes, some people swear by the more fusion slots or the more fusions you can strip out of a car, the better. Sure, some people upgrade these cars to stage five before they strip them. My feeling is it's all in the numbers. If you buy 10 of these for 790,000, okay, you get 40 possible fusion chances out of those 10, strip them in a row, and you will get some epic fusions. I guarantee it. So that is the way to build fusions up on the Audi. If you haven't bought Audis yet and you're short on Audi fusions, start buying them. Okay, let's talk about the actual speed trap now. This car is going to have a bit of a kind of a slow time with the speed trap, but but notice something. The difference between the quarter mile and the half mile top speed on this car is marginal. That means if the speed traps are quarter mile runs, it wouldn't make that much of a difference. I think they'll probably end up being half mile runs. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a challenge at all. And then the main thing is you want to tune it so they can do the job, right? Well, generally speaking, in half mile runs, what you want to do is you want to have a little more duration, a little bit more here, but not too much. This car, because of its um, inability to really push the top speed, if you put this out too far, it doesn't make it faster. If anything, it'll lose kind of lose its grunt up top and just fall on its face. So you want to put the top speed somewhere in the top gear near where you want to go, maybe 230 as a possible top speed. And that is the way you would do it. I'm not going to leave the manual launch on for this, but this is for half mile. 
for quarter mile, it's even more difficult to squeeze additional mile per hours out of this car. Um, it's going to do whatever it's going to do. It's very hard to get over 200. Let's say it's what the dyno says. You're not going to make it to 220 in the quarter. Only in the half would you be able to do something. As far as running it, well, it's got kind of a funky shift, uh, but it should be good for getting to the top speed. And notice it doesn't do much in seventh gear. So that basically did the 222. Now, I know I can probably squeeze a little more out of it if I put all the stage sixes out into it, but this is where you're at with basically the four big stage sixes, 222. But notice quarter mile is already 202. And even if you switch to quarter mile and you go a little more aggressive here, you maybe get 207, So, but you're not going to get much over that. This, this car just not a top speed car that's going to run well past its uh, mile per hour. So keep that in mind that it's a quick sprint car, but it's kind of a lousy half mile speed trap car. It's not going to do much in Tempest 3 unless this is a car you plan to switch out for the sprints. Uh, it should be able to do the 1.4940 to 60 pretty easily, provided you have enough upgrades. So with full stage six, uh, we'll just take a look at the dyno just so we kind of know where this car would be if you managed to fully max it. Did I put them all in? No, turbo, okay. So once you fully max this car, it is capable of tens. So it's a quick car. It'll get to the 10 second range and that is a good thing. But notice, it still wants to be right near that optimal point of somewhere near its stock transmission settings. Yes, it can get a little better. Almost like six gear tops out would be perfect. Then we put this back to where it can really bump that up. Now, I think the world record tune um, is somewhere like this. Let me show you. Uh, 4.40. I forgot this was a 9 or at 4, but I think it was maybe 6. So 4 point something. 0. All right, 4.0. There we go. So this is the world record tune if i recall correctly don't quote me on it but it's pretty close um that's on the world record tune facebook page in the uh, excel file you can always look there uh that's the best you're gonna get out of this car what about driving it well <clears throat> i don't like cars with funky shifts and this car is one of them the other thing is nitrous usage in this is a little little tough for me anyway i haven't hit dyno with this car easily yet uh, I would think third gear or fourth gear, the power, the long power gear might be the gear to go, um, go and hit nitrous in because you're going to have pretty quick, ah, oops, screw that up. You're going to have pretty quick second and third gear um, if you launch first and try to shift in your red line. So look at that. That's way off. So you're going to want to hit the first, those first three gears pretty quick uh, once you hit it. And then you want to move to, notice the uh, 0 to 60 is very fast, but 11.0 uh, is pretty bad. Okay, so this car has some funky shifts. Uh, I'm going to try to put it so that I can get it to... Okay, nitrous I used in 4th, and you shift all the way to 7th, and you should hit about a 2.17. Let's see what we did on that run. Should be good, hopefully. All right, 10.802. It's a 10.73 dyno, so eh, it's okay. Uh, but beats some of my other runs. So that's kind of where it's at. I don't find this car to be easy to drive. Now, uh, this is an Audi, right? If you have other Audis for the... Uh, 
supply cups, you can use a different Audi instead. This one, uh, certainly the tier three Audi is much easier to use for supply cup. You could probably get through all the supply cups with that tier three Audi RS5 or the LB RS5. Uh, not to say this car can't do it, but being that it's a little bit hard to drive and not the uh, easiest to manage to be dyno with, supply cup is going to be a little more difficult. I would actually recommend you use this car which is easier to drive and probably can easily make it through the supply cup without an issue. So there is your new 2014 LBR AV10 Plus Coupe. I haven't seen many of these in action in live racing. Uh, not to say they're not out there or that they're not good. Um, I just don't see myself getting a whole lot of use out of it after the PC Cup. Uh, it's a nice looking car, but it's got a bit of a weird shift pattern where it's, you know, uh, slow, quick, quick, slow and then normal i don't like those kind of weird ship patterns they make it difficult for me to be consistent so i probably won't be putting much use into this car down the line and that's always a kind of a disappointment i always like to get a car that i can use beyond the pc cup itself but i just don't see that happening with this car hey and that concludes our review and testing of the stage six effects of the next uh, the current uh, pc cup car the 2014 lbr v10 uh, please feel free to leave comments ask questions and uh, let me know what you think and please subscribe to the channel so when i put these videos up you can get notifications and finally as always thank you for watching my videos